recording stuff for so. Um, and so then you um, now we, we zoom in on Adam and Eve, and uh, we start Genesis two, uh, chapter four through twenty four. Somebody want to start with a chunk of that? These are the generations of the heavens and the earth <coughs> when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. But a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, someone else want to continue? A river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there it was separated into four head waters. The name of the first is a vision. It's when it winds through the entire oh. land of Halvala, where there's gold. The gold of that land is good. I didn't do that on purpose. Aromatic <laughs> resins and <laughs> are also there. The name of the second river is the Gilhan. It winds through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigri. It runs along the east side of the Asher. And the fourth river is the uh, Euphrates. The Lord, do you want me to continue? If you like. <laughs> I don't see any other bad words. The Lord, uh, <laughs> if you can earn your salvation, yes. <laughs> The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them, and whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all of the livestock, the birds of the air, and all the beasts of the field. But for Adam no suitable, suitable helper was found, so the Lord God caused the man to fall into the deep into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he had he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Do you want me to continue? Just do 24. Okay. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh. All right, stop there. I'm leave that last verse for next time. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this is, I made reference to this last time and we're, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but the word day in chapter 2, verse 4. Well, this is interesting. In the NIV, it doesn't use the word day. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Yeah, that's one way to get around it. <coughs> yeah. So in the original text, the word day is there. It's yeah. in the day that the Lord God created. Them. So that's interesting that it was removed in this translation. I didn't notice that. Hmm. Well, I guess we skip to the next question then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's just the point there is to, is to point out with the whole discussion of what does a day mean and stuff that right here in Genesis 2 we have um, clearly when he says in the day that um, that the heavens and the earth were created that's not referring to a 24 hour period mm -hmm. now you that you know does that mean that that the first six were or weren't or whatever that doesn't answer the question all it does is point out that the book of Genesis 
and in fact in this part of the creation account does use the word day to refer to a non 24 hour period right it's um, sort of fascinating though that he just said it that didn't happen yeah yeah that's, yeah it's that's the power of the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. all right okay i got the mike was Whole able question. to get his, his question to me now all right he says um all right so you talked a little bit last week about big the big bang space time a uh, matter in time um so are you suggesting that there was a time before time began as we know it he says i'd like to submit the following examples <laughs> of before time began all right and you give me second timothy 1 9 and titus 1 2 and i looked those up real quick um second timothy 1 9 who has saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which was granted us in christ jesus from all eternity um so which would have indicate before time began right. all right um and in the hope of eternal life which god who cannot lie promised long ages ago um which that long ages ago um <coughs> is uh is that same expression from eternity um before the beginning of time how the niv translates it and that's kind of what I was talking to you about Wednesday night about Dietrich Bonhoeffer um, and just his discussion of the three words in the beginning or no more than that in the beginning God created and and he was saying that man can't fathom it because man is in the middle we're between the beginning and the end and or the beginning as we know it mm -hmm. and so anyway okay. right right <laughs> yeah well you know it's okay it's, it's like this it's it's math i was i was um i was helping hannah with with her math and, and she was um they're doing sort of basic geometry lines and line segments and angles and all that kind of stuff right so so you can have a line that goes it, um as a theoretical construct that goes for eternity in two directions mm -hmm. okay that's a line if it has one endpoint, it's a ray. If it has two endpoints, it's a line segment. Okay. Um, but you can have a line segment as part of a line. All right. Creation is a line segment on the timeline of eternity. It's it goes eternally in one direction. It goes eternally in another direction. All right. Before creation there was no time as we know it or it was something else entirely um or it, it, you know it operated in a completely different way all right that's beyond our ability to comprehend because we're stuck on that segment we probably can't even call it it <laughs> like yeah yeah <laughs> you know and that's and that's so much of the problems that we have in sort of explaining god is is really it's a lot easier to talk about what god is not than what he is um, because he's just so far beyond us, you know, and, and and that's an argument that a lot of people make against God is is or against Christians having the corner on on God and saying, well, how can you claim to know what this infinite being that's so far above us is like? Well, um, he told us. <laughs> he revealed himself. Right. He revealed himself. He's a transcendent God. He chose to tell us who he is or at least to give us a glimpse it's like um when uh when moses said god i want to see your face and god says you can't handle my face all right you can't handle it <laughs> you can't handle the, the truth, truth. <laughs> <laughs> right. um so but you know he said I'll, I'll, okay i'll pass by you and you can see the back corner of my robe or something you know and, and um and and so it, he sees the back of him and, and and the idea is that i'm going to give you just a fractional glimpse well that's really the bible is a fractional glimpse of of who god is all right um and that's one of the great things about eternity people worry about getting bored you can delve into the mysteries of god in eternity um you're not going to get bored <laughs> so all right um so why did god put the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the garden of eden to see if we'd eat it. Mm. Except God knows everything. Oh, drat. We not the right <laughs> yeah, we did, but that can't be the reason he did it, because he knew that we would. <laughs> Put it there so that he could have Jesus die for our sins. You know what? Ultimately, 
yeah <laughs> right this is a really hard thing that a lot of people really struggle with because it makes it out like God set us up yeah <laughs> all right he knew we were gonna fail and so so it was the whole thing was a big setup oh you're gonna fail but then I'm gonna come and save you and it, it sort of sounds like a fireman who, who starts a house on fire and then goes in and, and saves the people from the burning building okay here's the diff backdraft Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, all right. Here's the difference. He put it there, and yes, he knew we were going to fail. Okay. But, and, and some people will still have a hard time with this. Okay. And, and, um, and, and all I can do at that point is, is chalk it up to, well, you know, God's ways are not our ways, and, and we don't really understand it. And when we get there, we'll go, oh, okay, now I understand. Um, but, <laughs> you know, meanwhile, it's what it is is obedience isn't really obedience unless there's actually a way for you to be disobedient. All right. So in order for for Adam and Eve to really be obedient, there had to be something, some way. All right. So God gives them everything. Is like here you have everything you need. Is eat any tree of the garden, and you know. You've got plenty. All right, there's this one with rotten fruit. Don't eat the rotten fruit. You know, and like, but there's there's apples and pomegranates and bananas and you know and, and or whatever you know kind of fruit was in that garden. Okay, and so you've got you've got all this great stuff. There's this one that's just don't eat that one. All right, it's, it wouldn't be good for you. Okay, and 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 and, and we go. Whoa, but that was temptation. Well. No, it wasn't. God wasn't tempting them to sin, right? I don't lock the lid of the trash can. I tell my kids not to eat what's in the trash can. Mm -hmm. And once they reach a certain age, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the time, you keep them, you know, you put gates up or something, you know. And so, um, so it's, it's not like, it's not like, ooh, shiny, you, you know. Don't, boy, doesn't this look you know the devil? He's like, oh, look at this, isn't this nice? You know, but God didn't do that. He just said, all right, just you can eat up any tree, just just don't eat that one, all right? Okay. Fair enough, you know. He could have also said, don't eat the sticks either, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> don't eat those twigs. <laughs> right. So, um, why did God create the devil? Oh, well, God didn't create the devil specifically. God created angels. And the devil fell. Okay. He, he, he used to be a, a good angel. Okay. And then the question of why did the devil fall, that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Um, okay, so the next question is, all right, there's two special trees in that garden. The tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. All right. Why did God put the tree? First of all, what's the tree of life? What happens if you eat the tree of life? You live forever. You live forever. All right. Why did God put that there? I'm not sure because we were already supposed to live forever. So man, man there would always <laughs> be man and woman. <laughs> right. Forever. But this is you eat of this, you live forever. It's a, and that one's in the middle. Know, immortality. Yeah. One is on the east and one's in the middle. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting. Part. I never thought about that before. Well, you do I, have a geography lesson in one of those classes. So how can we live forever if it's going to be the end of the world? So <laughs> there won't be anybody here living. Well, right, and you know, and that's everything changed when sin came into the world, All right? But originally, if they had eaten of that tree and if they hadn't eaten of the other tree, um, they would have lived forever in the Garden of Eden, and um, and it would have been perfect, and and God wouldn't have had to bring the world to an end. Um, because it would have everything would have been perfect, and there's a lot of debate about okay over time wouldn't the garden get kind of full or, or what would happen? I don't know. You know, it's a big world. <laughs> it's, yeah, you know, I I, I don't worry about those kind of details. You know what would have happened because really, the, the idea of of a world where human beings are not sinners, you know what what could we have accomplished in cultivation and all kinds of stuff if we, were, if we weren't so busy fighting with each other you know <laughs> so I, yeah I don't really think that that's an issue um, I'm sorry did I miss the answer to why the tree of life it was so that we would live forever I mean really God created us to live forever 
ideally, if, if sin hadn't come into the world, living forever would be a great thing. But, you know, instead, because we live in a fallen world, I mean, I, I do this with the, um, kids in conversation, do you want to live forever? And, you know, and you kind of get, like, yeah, and, 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 <laughs> well, I don't know, you know. Uh, if you ever uh, read the book or see the movie Tuck Everlasting, it's a, they do a kind of an interesting take on that. Um, there's been other um, stories that have been written about people that are immortal and they want to die, but they can't, and, you know, and, and things like that. Um, I remember one time when I was in a Bible study and Paul Doris said, said something that I had never thought of. He was saying that uh, God had to drive the man and woman from the garden after they sinned, because if they had eaten of the tree of life, they would have lived forever in their sin. Yes. I had never thought of that. Yep. Yeah, and I was going to bring that up next time oh, when we talked about Paul. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's all right. But I just you ruined his lesson. I just I <laughs> remember right, I never Paul yet. saying that, and I always <laughs> use that as a good example of why you should attend Bible study, <laughs> is because people do have yep. other standings that we don't, and we can trade back and forth. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. <laughs> so in ten to fourteen, this horrible part that Denise so graciously read. Um, <laughs> all right. We have this bizarre geography lesson. All right. Okay, if you can't actually go there, what's the point of, of listing this? And by the way, this we know where three of these rivers are. Mm -hmm. All right, There's one that's not there, but if you dig down, they found a fossil uh, or a, a ancient riverbed sort of buried underneath. That fourth river is there. They found it. At, um, in Moses' day... It would have already been buried by oh. sedimentary rock. Hmm. And so, you know, you want your... How do we know that the Bible's the Word of God? How did Moses know about this ancient riverbed? <laughs> he wasn't a geologist. He hadn't excavated this particular region or anything like that. Well, God appeared to him. Right, right. Okay, but, you know, I, I have people all the time asking me, well, what makes you think the Bible's the Word of God? And it's all prophecy and you know all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. Well, right here, you've got an ancient riverbed that's the the fourth river that Moses mentions here, and um, that every you know even then anybody that would have looked at that would have said, um, um, what fourth river? You know, you can you can nail down the spot with the, the other three because they're there. Um, you can figure out where... And that's why we have this geography lesson. Mm -hmm. So that we know. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's to I'm point right. out... <laughs> well, <Ding. laughs> right. But it's to point out that this is not a once upon a time story. Right? Now, if you <laughs> asked, like a Babylonian, how did the world come into existence? Oh, well, the god Marduk got into a fight with the dragon Tiamat and, um, and destroyed Tiamat and created the world out of Tiamat's body. Okay. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what a great story. I, I love the story, but um, but you know, there you go. Well, when did that happen? What do you mean, when did it happen? You know, for them, it was just this sort of like eternal truth or something like that. They would not have even considered nailing it down in history. They would not say, you know, a thousand years ago or, or something like that. In, or, you know. 300 years before the reign of king whatever all right whereas the bible even here we have we have this nailed down in geography this is this is right here all right and then very soon after this we're going to get into names and dates and things like that that we're going to kind of skip over for this purpose of the study but um but we're nailing this down in history we're nailing this down in geography this is not a once upon a time fairy tale this is history Right. It should be just accepted. It should be. Yeah. But unfortunately, we live in a fallen world, and you can't blame the world for acting like the world. Yeah. You can't blame the lost for acting like the lost. 
Can we blame Adam and Eve? <laughs> if you like. But it didn't really help them because they tried passing the buck too. I'll live forever. I was blowing out 324 candles on my cake. Wow. Oh, you've you got need enough lung capacity for that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't right. it odd that the city names change, you know, when they say like the ancient city of, which used to be this, which used to be that, but uh -huh. the rivers kept their names? Because that's what they're still called. Mm -hmm. Maybe Today, because whoever conquered the I city. Think the Euphrates and the Texas. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, well, the cities often change their names based on, yeah, who conquered it. You know, Istanbul was Constantinople. Um, but even in this day, uh, countries and, and have changed change. names. And sure. You know, yeah. a globe that I had 25 years ago is worth except for the fun of looking at right. it. Right. So yeah. we could sell it on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> you probably, probably could. As an, as an antique. <laughs> okay, so the first time that God sees something is not good. Remember, he created this, he said it was good. He created this, he said it was good. And then in verse 18, 218, he says it's not good. And what is it's not good? Man to be alone. For man to be alone. All right. What do we learn about God from this? He's going to make a helper. All right. That it's, it's good for man to have a helper. All right. But what and is he this? He cares about us. He cares. All right. And yeah, he cares. And, and specifically that this whole, this idea of a helper, of caring, of love. All right. God is all about relationship, all right? Because God, all right, this, the English language, is, I, I really hope that we have a better language to deal with in heaven because the English language just falls short so much, all right? But God loves each other, <laughs> okay? The persons of the Trinity love each other, all right? Um, with a love that, that's beyond our ability to, to even begin to fathom. All right. So God creates man. And man has God to love, but he doesn't have anybody else to love. And he doesn't have anybody to have to 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 have that sort of personal um sort of an equal to love the way that the Father, Son and Spirit are all co-equal in majesty. All right? So that's not good because God wants man to have the same love that he has. And so that's not good that man is alone. All right. So then also be for reproduction, right? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, there's that. But if but if, you know, really if Adam was going to live forever and if he ate the tree of life, okay. he wouldn't need to worry about reproducing. That's box elder book. Not a fly. Look what is no. that? Okay. That's a box elder book. Box elder book. They're yeah. everywhere. Um, um. <laughs> I have to say, Tony, I don't want us to get way off the subject, that's but uh, uh, that's why I think when it comes to homosexuality, I'm not sure Ouch. there's that experience. I'm getting very deep, but as it was intended, right, that, right. that communion. Yeah, and and that's yeah. <coughs> that's why I've always said that. Um, <coughs> The, in fact, I wrote a. There's a blog post on our church website um, that I wrote last year about um, responding to homosexuality. What's and and people always point to Leviticus, right? But then you know they sort of turn around and go, yeah, well, it also says don't eat shellfish, you know, and, and so like which that's uh, sort of shows an improper understanding of Leviticus. But um, more importantly, and and there are New Testament references to homosexuality too, all right? But where the the sort of proof text in a sense. Of um, of God's definition of marriage is in Ephesians five, where He says, "Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave up His life for your wives. Submit to your husbands as the church submits to Christ." Mm -hmm. All right, that's the key because there we see that marriage, and and this takes us nicely back to Genesis two, is marriage is a reflection of the relationship that God has with us. Mm -hmm. All right, and um, and so it's just it's that love and and. And when you have, um, in, in because you you have the, um, Christ as the groom and 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 the church as the bride, if you have 
two Christs or two brides, Christless brides, uh, it's just, it's not the same. And so God wants more for us. He wants better for us. So, yeah. All right. Um, so what does, and this is kind of all tied together, this whole um, creation of woman. In fact, you know, I want to jump ahead, actually, to a few questions down. Why did God put Adam through the hassle of naming all the creatures before creating Eve? Right. Was it that God didn't know what would thought maybe that one of these actually would be a suitable helper for him? I thought it was interesting that scripture that that they went through all the animals and they just like yeah I'm not sure so that he could have um, I don't know if authority is the right word over the animals. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So he could have the authority. Over authority over the animals. Thing. Okay. Sure, and um, you know, and that that shows his. It gave him a real appreciation for God's creation. Look, God brings him all these animals in, and he, Adam's just got to be loving this. Going, oh, look at. I mean, you know, I go to the zoo and go, look at that, look at that, and you know, aren't these amazing and, and stuff like that? Imagine all these animals being brought to you and and going, oh, what do you want to call this one? You know, I mean, that would be a blast, right? So. Um, and, and so many of these animals would have been new to him, you know, and, and stuff, and not necessarily the ones that are just wandering around the garden. And, um, okay, so so that gave him an appreciation for God's creation. But even though God's creation was so amazing and all of these things were here, none of them was suitable. All right? So then God creates Eve, and finally he's found, and, and he's got this expression, at long last, like, Finally, and, and so we, you know, we get the idea that there's some time has elapsed here. Although then you get in, you get into that whole question of of whether because this all happened on day six, um, but you know, but Adam says finally um, after his nap. Eve, you look a lot better than them goats. <laughs> <laughs> and them cows. And them elephants. Well, maybe that was that he wanted, he wanted Adam to be really thankful that he got Eve. But, but that's it. That's exactly it. All right? God creates Eve, and, and Adam says, Oh, awesome! God, you created all these animals, and they're so amazing, but this woman... Wow! <laughs> right? I wonder if Eve felt the same way <laughs> when she saw Adam. <laughs> <laughs> he says, oh, oh gosh. I hope I don't hear her side. I'm <laughs> stuck with this guy. Well, that brings us back to the, um, the previous question of what does the order of creation tell us about men, about women, and about our relationship with each other? The only thing that comes to my mind is that it it follows an order. Okay. It's you know it's kind of the way it's just it, I want to say it just happened. Obviously that's not true because God created, but that is the order that it occurred in. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm All right. In Any our relationship to each other. Man's hands the head of the household, and the woman is <laughs> second. <Servant. laughs> is second. Well, a servant. Right. Well, well, you know, it, it, you in scripture, though, isn't it, isn't it the man that's supposed his responsibility to bring the children up? Yep, we do. There's very clearly the in scripture the man is the head of the house. All right, mm -hmm. that we are the kings. <laughs> yeah, that's we are the servants. All right, but keep in mind what Israel did to their king. No, no, I ain't <laughs> Right. So, yes, the man. The man is the head, as Christ is the is the head of the church. Yeah. What did the church do to Christ? Yeah. <laughs> that right. real life, you got all women. Now, you That's can't why women that. live longer you than can't men. Tell me that they're the church. Right. They're right. the okay. So well, yeah. Right. But um, right. So the man is the head, but in the in the Bible, leadership's all about servanthood. Yeah. Jesus came to be our head. How did he? How did he show that by washing our feet, by dying for us? All right, his whole life was an act of service. And that is the other part of that scripture is 
that 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 man is the head and it needs it needs to be willing to give up his life as Christ gave up his right, life. Right, right. And not it's just I'd be willing to die for her, but my whole life. Yeah. A lot of people have a hard time with that. Yeah, That's be a pretty easier tall to order. die than to give up your bowling night. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. That's a different <laughs> yeah. thing. Well, I'd take a bullet for her. Oh. Will you, will you take five minutes for her? You know? Then I could have bowled 300, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, some have looked at this and said, all right, so God created animals, then Adam, then Eve. Oh, he was the, she's, she's the most the important. She's the pinnacle of, of creation. I never thought of it that way. Yeah, that you're up so on, the, on the pedestal. This is a man who lives in a house with four women. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's called brainwashing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sucking up. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to survive. <laughs> you do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> If I told Greg he had to handle everything and he had to be in charge of everything, well, he'd be crazier than he is now. But <laughs> you know? I mean, it's just it's, it's too much. All right, but you that's know? not it's not that that he bears all the res you know that ultimately he bears all the responsibility. That doesn't mean that every decision has to be his decision. All right, it it means that that he is has this sense of of oversight. Okay, but okay, so just like using the parallel. Of, of me as the pastor of this church, I don't make every decision that's made around here. Okay? Um, because there's plenty of, of people that are better at certain decisions than I am. Okay? Discussion this morning about the roof. All right? The whole financial and what's good for roofs and all that kind of stuff. That's, I'm theology. You want theology? I got theology. You know, but... You want to talk about about bank loans and all that kind of stuff? <laughs> That's not my thing. I'm not an economist, you know. And and so it is in our house. There's certain things that my wife handles, right? Um, because that's her area, right? You want to know which car seats have been recalled? <laughs> She'll tell you, <laughs> right? Um, but when the kids have a theological question, go ask your dad, right? Um, yeah. Well, mostly because they were Lutheran and I was Catholic. <laughs> yeah, because that's what they... Yeah. Um. And it's also, I, I don't know if this would even apply, but in any group or organization or anything like that, in the end there has to be a final say. You know, like... Right, yeah, we, you we can't take have all of the information yeah. right. and then someone has to make the final decision. Right. Yeah, yeah, and the, that doesn't mean they don't listen to the others. You know, yeah. and and any time a man is lording it over his wife, yeah. he is not no. um, showing the leadership that, that God is no, talking he's about. Not. All right. Um, so, um, in uh, so so that's this whole concept of helper. Right? It sounds, in our sort of egalitarian women's lib sort of idea, do people say women's lib anymore? I don't know. Um. <laughs> they, they still say male chauvinistic pigs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd have yeah, to the other part. way too, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, you can't have it just yeah. one way. <laughs> I don't, you know, equal rights or, or whatever you want to call it. Um, well, they got the other part that. already okay. messaged. So, so that's no. this whole concept. <laughs> uh, how do you understand this word in, in 218, helper? Um, Lord said, "It's not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him." A partner. Okay. Is that acceptable? My no. <laughs> my note says somebody to complete him. I like that. And I do think that's. You true. can keep that Bible note. I like. I like that too. <laughs> I like that, that note was good. The that other was note. Good. Yeah, tear that one out. <laughs> Someone to complete them. I like that one the best. I like that. Make sure you tell Greg that tonight. Okay. <laughs> you complete me. You complete Plus me. Movie too. So you complete <laughs> him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I complete you. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> why I'd be staying at tonight. <laughs> no, we got a spare bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, just a note here. Uh, 219, 
says had formed some in some of it. Um, we, we mentioned this back when we did that that atheist Bible study. Okay. Um, all right. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field, the birds of the air. He brought them to the man to see what what he would name them. All right. So some people have taken this as that at this point God formed the animals. Well, then you have man being created before the animals. All right. But yeah. what it actually says is had formed. Yeah, past tense. They they had already been formed. So now he was bringing that to it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you say, oh, there's a contradiction. No, it's not. You just have to actually look at what it really says. Um, sometimes it's like because they're using the King James or something like that. And certain things, you know, the King James is an imperfect translation either. Even though some people say it's an inspired translation. Yeah, <laughs> but how come it doesn't say that? If it's supposed to say it, why doesn't it say it? That's what always <laughs> Yeah. Because <laughs> um, I don't read Hebrew, and God knows that. Or <laughs> Greek, or whatever. Yeah. Aramaic. Well, that's that's <laughs> my my next study that I'm doing on Sunday mornings. Um, we're going to talk about some um, words that that are difficult to translate into English, <coughs> or that that English translations of Bibles don't quite capture the idea. Um, I sort of alluded to it this, uh, which coincidentally, I, I just. We just came up with that topic this morning in class, um, but it was in my sermon where they have the Pharisee and the tax collector, mm -hmm. right? Where he says, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. The word there, have mercy, literally it's, Lord, mercy seat me. Oh. The mercy mm -hmm. seat on the Ark of the Covenant, oh. Oh. where the blood was <laughs> shed for the forgiveness of the sins of the people. Mm. So that's what literally he was saying. Lord, cover my sin with the blood that has been shed for my forgiveness. But it's it's hard to do that with one word. In Hebrew, you can do that. In English, you really can't. And and it, it's sort of if you try to if you try to really capture the the meaning of it, you it, it's you you lose the oh, flow of the story. So, um. Okay. So, just wrapping things up, um, we see this whole idea of um, a family, of, of, of God's love, that, that, that's shown as, um, and marriage as the, the uh, human example of God's love, both of his relationship with us, um, and, and also we, we see, we get a, a hint of the relationship of the persons of the Trinity um, together. Um, and and it's all about servanthood and and, um, and and giving for the other and and all that kind of thing, and um, and and one thing to mention with verse twenty four, for this reason a man will leave his father and mother be united to his wife and they will become one flesh. Right, um, a lot of couples don't quite do that. And run into all kinds of problems because um, one of the one or both of them are not able to sort of cut the apron strings. All right, leads to all <laughs> kinds of problems. But right here in the Bible, it says, you "Leave um, your father and mother to be united with your spouse." Doesn't mean you don't care about them anymore or anything like that. It's, Right, but now your spouse is your primary responsibility besides God. Mm -hmm. Right, and um, and so it's that's really important for marriages that they understand that um, in advance, because otherwise you have um, you know the whole mother-in-law syndrome, you know, the, um, and and stuff like that, and and so um, and and it's important as mm -hmm as in-laws and you know as, as parents of children who are married and that to understand that too that what God is joined together let no man separate that includes the, the parents and in-laws you know so um, and, and just one other thing that, that I want to throw in here, and this is and we'll, we'll come back to this concept the word earth um is translated it's it's Eretz in Hebrew right 70% of the times in in um, and this is in the American Standard um, Bible but it's this is 
pretty much true of, of any English Bible. Um, the word 70% of the time is translated land. And, um, but here we have, it's usually translated earth. Um, and when you get into uh, the question of um, oh, throughout this where we have the um, the, the fruit on the earth and, and, and all that kind of stuff um, like in verse 5 no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the earth no plant of the field had yet sprung up uh, for God had not sent rain on the earth right now if instead you read this as land in the sense of um, this land is my land this land is your land you know as in a, a small geographical area or even a large geographical area but a finite geographical area all right so no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the land on in in this land or, or in the area um, and Lord God had not sent rain in this area. Um, so you get this idea that it's, it's um, that it's it, of um, that doesn't necessarily mean. It depends how you translate that word of whether it rained anywhere else. <laughs> um, and that, so that's that's a big point of contention between the whole old Earth, young Earth thing. Is is was there rain before Noah's flood came along? Um, but it's important as we go through, as we read the book of Genesis, especially in the early chapters where we're talking about a lot of this stuff, is how do you translate? Wherever you see the word earth, it can also be translated land. Now there's another word that, um, which interestingly enough is um, Adam, or, or actually, I'm sorry, Adama, um, which, means, um, which means land, specifically like dry ground. Um, and uh, and that's a different term, but this word Eretz can either be translated earth or land, uh, like a, a region, or dirt. Um, so you always have to kind of look at the context. But in, in these scriptures that we were that's looking... one word. <laughs> well, we use the word land. Yeah, and ground. All over the whole land, yeah. all right, or it's, you know, or... Or in fact, we use the word earth, earth to mean dirt to mean as dirt. well. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we run into the same problems in yeah. English. All right. But you get into this where it doesn't say, or even where it says like the whole earth versus the whole land. Those mean two very different things. Well, which one is it? Yeah. Um, you know. Um, so that's probably the problem with English because you have to figure out right which way they're going with yeah. that. Right. And, but, but in this whole, in these verses that you're reading, and maybe oh, eternity, um, it also eternity. does use the word ground. Mm -hmm. So, I, I guess when I'm just reading these, yeah, I does. take the earth to that. mean the whole earth, and the ground no to mean to work the, ground. the field and the the land, the dry land that's the the local. Mm -hmm. That's what I have. A, yeah, you so plow your earth tonight. <laughs> so sure it's just it's something to keep in mind, and earth. and we will come back to that, all right. Okay. But it's just something to keep in mind <laughs> as we. <laughs> all right. Earth land. We pretty much got through it. Um, kind of skimmed over it, but um, <clears throat> did a lot better than last week. So um. Oh, what? that was that whole you know new and older. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we had, well, and last week, now that um, this is also available as an audio podcast, and we had, um, like, I think nine uh, people that have subscribed to the podcast, and so we'll be listening to this after the fact, um, plus is people watching um, after the fact of the recorded video and, and stuff like that. So uh, just an encouragement, again, to anybody that's watching this to or listening to this uh, to go to shepherdtheridge.org and um, and feel free to participate in the discussion there. If you have questions, comments, um, anything like that, anything that we didn't cover you'd like us to have covered or anything like that, and we'll continue the discussion online. 
So we haven't had a lot of discussion mm -hmm. online yet, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think we're just getting warmed up. So uh, <laughs> the nice thing about having it, the the online discussion is people don't you know if you're listening to this after the fact and you think of something you go and check it out and it hasn't been discussed. If it's a year later, we can still discuss it. It'll still be there. Right. So, um, so this is we can continue this discussion until Jesus comes back. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so, <laughs> hey, you know what? If, if if I weren't specifically limiting these lessons to um, to uh, you know, we're we're going to cover this much today, and next time we're going to go on to the next chapter or whatever, we would be discussing this until <laughs> Jesus comes back, which could be tomorrow. All right, <laughs> or it could be a thousand years from now, and yeah. if it was a thousand years from now, <laughs> well, would that be a day? <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we'll close. <laughs> Lord God, Heavenly Father, you are with us every day, and and you care for us, and you provide for our needs, and you give us relationships so that we can have a taste of the love that you have for the the, the different persons of the Trinity, um, have with each other, and and that uh, the taste of the love that you have for us and, and so we thank you for that taste open our eyes to to better see that and in turn take that love that you've given to us and to share it not only with our families um, but also with with those who uh, who you you bring into our lives um, that are sort of more neutral toward us um, co-workers and things like that and 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 also to our enemies to help them to see your love as well we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.